Hey, what's up guys? Uh, this is the Mod Master, and today I'm talking all about themes in RetroPie, specifically emulation station themes. So a couple weeks ago, I came across a user named Kevin, aka TMT Turtle Guy, on the RetroPie forums, and he was trying to put together uh, what looked to me to be a, a pretty awesome theme. And, and so I, I hooked up with him, and uh, tried to see if I could help out speed along process because coincidentally I was looking for a theme for my build and uh, this is what we came up with it's it's to me I, it's got to be one of the best themes out there we, we put a lot of work into this he TMT turtle guy I'm gonna put a link down in the description to the forum if you like this theme Please go over there and thank him. He he did a ton of work, a lot of late night hours on this theme, and and a lot of stuff put into it. He uh, basically, when when I was looking for a theme, I came across this in the in the forum, and and just you know, wow, I was blown away. So uh, I he actually let me put together uh, a lot of the backgrounds on some of the different systems I got to pick out. Uh, got to got to really go through and surf and find uh, games that I enjoyed as a kid and um, you know got to incorporate a lot of the things that that I liked uh, he did all the all the final artwork uh, did all the configurations um, really great guy so I tell you what you know if you if you enjoy this theme go over there check him out links in the description tell him thanks and uh, yeah so anyways what I want to talk about today is I want to show uh, a couple things. Today, if you go to install this theme, uh, you're lucky enough that the theme's sitting in the RetroPie themes database. A lot of themes out there aren't. A lot of themes that you want to try are are ones that you have to download through GitHub or another resource, and it, it can be difficult to get them set up and get them running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to a, a fresh vanilla build of RetroPie. And I'm, I'm going to set up this theme. And then I'm also going to show you how to add your themes directory to your Samba share so it can just pop up on Windows. I find when developing themes, having it, very, having it there conveniently to be able to drag and drop is, is huge. Plus, as you install themes, you get to take a look at um, some of the some of the other um, the the XML and config files, see how they're set up, and uh, you know, hopefully, seeing seeing what other people have done and what ideas they had inspires you to create your own. So, in any case, I'm going to switch over to the default build, and we will get it set up looking like this in no time. So what I have here is just a bland vanilla build uh, straight from the RetroPie website. And what I want to show you is a couple things. So when I posted the, the theme over on Facebook, uh, one of the biggest problems the people was having was that they either couldn't get the theme installed. Of course, this was before it was uh, in the... RetroPie themes database, or when they would install it, it would come up all white. Um, that that you know the the crazy white screen screen we used to get when we were prior to RetroPie 4.2 uh, or an older version of Emulation Station. So uh, you see down here at the bottom, Emulation Station 2.15 RP. So uh, I believe they're at 2.18 now, and you need to be upgraded to reap all the benefits of the comic book theme. Specifically, because if you're if you're running multiple systems, um, the the issue that's been been a problem for a while, but they fixed. So, if you're going to install this theme, the absolute first thing you should do, and really you should do it all the time, is keep Emulation Station and your RetroPie setup script up to date. 
So uh, assuming that you've got your image installed, assuming that you've uh, expanded the file system, done the things you need to do, just go into the RetroPie menu. Let me show you this. So now that it's in the themes list, See, it's not here. Uh, I believe it's I believe it's theme number 40 or 41, and it's not here. So if you get to this point and it's not here, you got to go update the RetroPie setup script. So do that first. Right. All right. Update RetroPie setup script. For me, whenever I'm developing, I absolutely love to have a keyboard hooked up. I, I, I don't know. I, I just I like to have it. Gets me through the menus quicker. Makes me happy. So I've always got a keyboard. I usually have a, a USB, some sort of wired controller. And just takes a lot of the guesswork out before I finalize a build. I'll install whatever final controller I want to use, and then of course disconnect the keyboard. But just what I like to do. All right, you see we're uh, at version 4.2.3 now, which was is our updated list. And I'm just going to go back and see if I can show you. I've only got one system on this theme, so I don't think it'll show you the error, but we're going to try anyway. So, uh, yeah, let me exit out of here. themes and now bam comic book and comic book 4 3 uh, 4 through ratio being for a square screen like if you're doing a, a legit retro cabinet arcade cabinet or something um, team tutorial guy took the time to to scale down the images and make them fit and look good in 4 3 so I'm on a 16 by 9 system widescreen system so I'll install this one. I tell you, and the, the guys at uh, RetroPie really helped us out by, I mean, they, they got this theme in the database two days after we posted it out there, so that, that was really good on them. All right. settings now I'm not exactly sure since I only have one system in this might very well work um, I'm kind of hoping it fails just so you can see what I'm talking about nope well it didn't now again your safest bet before setting this up is going into RetroPie, going into RetroPie setup, manage packages, manage your main packages, oh, I'm sorry, manage your core packages, emulation station. So, under emulation station, you can, you used to have to update it from source to get the latest. Uh, they finally rolled it over to a uh, binary installer, so you can update from binary and it will, it's a little bit faster than from source. 
and uh, it, it will give you everything you need to run this theme and any of the other themes that are being developed right now. So, update emulation station. Um, definitely something you're going to need. So, all right, go back. All right, so uh, all I did was put Nintendo in. And if you notice, there's no artwork, there's no description, there's no anything. In fact, all that's there is the ROM name and the list. It's the only ROM I put on the list. Which is a ROM that I own. That's why it's the only one on my list. It's a game that I own. So, this kind of takes me into where I want to go with these videos. Setting up your theme is only half the battle. Getting your ROM lists, your art lists, your your art files all in the correct directories. Getting the XMLs uh, set up properly. Your game list.xml set up properly to point to everything in the right direction. Uh, that that's the other half of the battle. So you're halfway there if you get to this point. The the next thing I'm hearing is that there are there's issues configuring all this other stuff, and that's the that's the gamelist.xml and managing the artwork and make sure all the file names match and their locations are set up right in the file. So I'm going to touch on that here, but I'm, I'm, I want to make another video uh, that really goes through how to do that and how to set it up. And there's tools that are out there, there's scraper tools that are available that help you fill in a lot of those blanks. Um, but honestly, knowing how to do it manually, knowing how to get into it, navigate the file, and make the edits you want to make will help you in the long run. Even as more and more tools are developed and things get better. So what I'm going to do now is I want to switch over to my Windows machine and show you guys how to set up the themes folder on your Samba share so that you can easily navigate to the themes drive or, or folder, I should say, through your Windows desktop. So if you're writing your own theme, if you're, if you're playing with different themes and themes aren't in the RetroPyThemes database yet, you can just drag and drop them. You can download them from GitHub, drag and drop, no big deal. Easy peasy. So I'm going to switch over to my PC now, and we will go a little further. Okay guys, so to see your Samba shares, I think everybody's pretty familiar with this, but just in case, um, pretty simple, RetroPie, slash slash RetroPie, boom. Alright, so again, this is my vanilla build. I have my Raspberry Pi hooked up to my home network. It's online. I can browse to the Samba shares just the way that I did. So, default, what's here? BIOS configs, ROMs, and splash screens. What I want to do is add a themes folder to this Samba share so that we can access it very easily. So, the way we do that is with Putty. And putty's the same way. You can just go RetroPie. Uh, yes, if you get this warning, if you never connected before. The username is Pi. Password is Raspberry, unless you've changed it. All right, so I'm going to include to the text document that I have these instructions in so you can just copy and paste and make your life a little bit easier. The first thing we need to do is modify permissions on our themes folder. So sudo is giving higher level permissions. chmod 0777 
is the permissions level and this is the folder we're changing permissions on EDC emulation station themes now in the future when we start getting into like I said I want to make videos on talking about modifying uh, the game list files and things like that you have read write permissions on all those directories I also like to do things with bezels and shaders so the bezels and shaders where they're stored inside um, the RetroArch folder it, we're gonna want to change more permissions down the road and the permissions you know aren't, aren't for anything except that give us access as a Windows user to those folders whether it be through WinSCP or a Samba share like we're doing we just want to be able to open it up so that we have the ability to edit it from our Windows machine or whatever machine you're on. So, with that, all right, change the file. So now we need to edit the SMB config file, which is the Samba config. Um, the text editing program is Nano. Nano is a pretty simple program. Uh, it, if you're not used to it, it might might take a little little to to figure out, but you navigate down the file using your arrow keys. Don't don't try to use your mouse or anything like that. Um, it's it's just not going to work. Let's see if I can make this a little bigger here. All right. So what we want to do if we go all the way down to the bottom of this file, you are going to see our current Samba shares. Okay. So ROMs. It defines the ROM pass if it's writable, yes. Um, if guests can use it, yes. Obviously, whatever machine you're trying to remote into, you're going to be a guest to the Linux operating system. Um, BIOS is the same way. Um, configs and splash screen. So what we want to add is basically the same thing, but with the directory of the themes. So we've got themes, the path to where it's going, it is writable, guess are okay, uh, the create mask, directory mask, and the user of pi. So to quit out of nano, you have to hit control x, that's what caret x is. Since we've edited the file, Nano is going to ask us if we want to save the modified buffer. Uh, we can just hit Y. And it's going to ask you the file you want to write. You want to write the same file. Hit enter. Bam. Good to go. So now we can reboot the Pi from here. Again, we need the sudo command. And reboot. I told you to. All right. Once it's, I think that it's rebooted, I'll try to restart the session. Nope, not yet. I'll try to restart the session just to make sure my connection's good and that it has booted back up. Hey, all right, we're back. So we're done in putty. Now I'm going to go back, check out my Samba share. Boom. And check it out. Now we have themes. So now wherever you download your theme from, if it's a user on the forum, if it's from GitHub, if it's one that you're creating right here on your Windows desktop, you can drag and drop uh, your themes directly in, uh, test builds on the fly. Um, you can have 10 different versions of comic book if you want to make little tweaks and changes just to see what happens. And then you can switch between them on the Pi just by going through the, uh, the UI menu. 
So, if we look in comic book, and I'm going to stick with Nintendo, because that's the only ROM I put on here. Okay, before I even get there, so there are a lot of of basic systems in here, and and these aren't systems; they're they're themes. So each theme individually goes to another system. Just like in attract mode and things, if you wanted to build a favorites theme, right, you could absolutely build you. A folder that said favorites now you would most likely want to have have it still separated out by system because in your ES systems config it needs to it, it, you, you, you have to define what theme to use and you also have to define which in you may use. so obviously you don't want to put Nintendo together with a MAMROM because they don't use the same emulator. So that is that is the one sort of limitation. Outside of that, you can go nuts. Um, for instance, Capcom. You know, uh, it's one thing I loved about Attract Mode was having this this Capcom, you know, folder. Now, uh, in my builds, Capcom uses uh, Final Burn Alpha. So... I'll bring up the ES themes file here in a second, and we can look at um, what I'm talking about. So, in any case, for NES, when you're dealing with themes, get down here. All right, your theme.xml defines everything. It defines where things are, and again, TMT Turtle Guy. He, he trial and error, he got a lot of help from guys out there on the forum in, in placement, in smoothing it out, making this all make sense. And he, he's, he's a master. He, he taught me a lot going through all this. So um, everything's defined on a position size. Everything is defined as far as where, where the art is that's being used. And then within each one, within each one, you have your different art pieces that that make up the theme. So, again, not a little outside the scope of what we're doing here, but I just wanted you to see specifically. Um, how that was set up. And so you remember Nintendo had its uh, it, it didn't have anything scraped. You know, the ROM name was there, but there was nothing. There was no video. There was nothing to go with it. Well, I kind of cheated. And what I did was when I set up this build, I named my gameslist.xml to just put an O in front of it. So now what this does is it, it's only looking for gameless.xml. It didn't see gameless.xml, so it had no way to fill all the data in the theme. So let's open this one up. Now if we go look, your games list is literally every game that could be possible in your system. If you use one of the scrapers that are out there, uh, it will scrape the ROMs you have in your directory and make you a smaller game list. If you get a master game list, it will have not only all the different types of ROMs, but even the different types of possible extensions. It can be a 7-zip, NES, or a zip file. So, in your game list file, it's important to have the path, and then if you want to change the name, as far as how it looks in the list, 
you can shorten it down here. Like for instance, I don't I don't really want to have in parentheses USA Europe, so I just put ten yard fight. The description of the game: This is scraped um, with the RetroPie scraper. Um, publisher, basically, you know, description. Uh, publisher, developer, and then these images is where you don't get this through your base scrapers. Sometimes you got to get info from a couple different scrapers. Your image marquee or your your wheel art basically and your video snap release date genre and number of players so all of these pieces here in this section are going to fit in a different field in that theme as long as your themes configured to use all those things so the neat thing about comic book is some people like the snap, some people don't. Some people don't want to waste the file size on the snaps. Some people absolutely want to have them. So if you don't have a video snap in the comic book theme, it will default to the box art image. So that is really cool. Uh, there is plans in the future to do something really awesome with the box art try to incorporate that or I'm sorry the marquee the wheel heart um, but more to come on that so the important thing here is to make sure not only your paths are right so within the same directory within the same directory we've got box art wheel see and 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 again not wheel art just wheel snap so when you get into each one of these, the next thing that's important is the actual file name and file extension need to be 100% accurate. Now, the neat thing about the, uh, the game list file is that if, your, if the name of your MP4 was 7, as long as it's listed in here as the snap to use for this ROM is 7, you're good to go. No worries, no problems. Other front ends, it's it's all about name matching. And the names have to match every space, comma, period, parentheses, everything has to match. So it, it gives you another level to catch and help correct mistakes um, by being able to edit this file. So in any case, just kind of a, a brief overview. Uh, like I said, I'm, uh, I think that's probably going to be my next video is actually uh, going through this file, setting up a, uh, a full build. And then hopefully that helps out you guys as you're trying to parse through what you want in your systems and, and really help you show the, the potential of this theme and, and a lot of the other themes that are getting developed out there. So, all right, what I'm going to do... I'm going to go ahead and make this actually game list XML again. And then I'm going to switch back over to the Pi and uh, show you our results. Booting back into our Pi. Any changes that you make, you're going to have to reboot. I, I tell you, 95% of any problems on any system can be solved by rebooting. So, all right, going to Nintendo with any luck, bam. So, what do we got now? We've got box art. We've got our video snap playing. We've got the description rolling through, release date, genre, developer, players. It keeps track of number of times played. And you see in the list, it says 10 yard fight just the way it should not with the parentheses and things like it did beforehand so there you have it that is everything there is to it so I, again you know now that comic book itself is in the retro pythons database a lot simpler you make your build and create your own build. You know, it's it's 
you learn a lot more creating your own than just taking one of these images and applying it. Um, I, I, I won't say I haven't used an image, you know, and I've learned a lot from, from checking those out, but it really is enjoyable to get in there and, and build your own and, and see where it takes you. Um, but no matter how you start, you got to make sure that your RetroPie is 4.2 or higher. You got to run the RetroPie setup script and you really should update Emulation Station to the latest version also. Again, I'm putting the link to the forums. Get over there, thank TMT Turtle Pie, because this TMT Turtle Guy, because this theme is definitely one of the best, if not the best, in my opinion. You can check out my links down there. I'm on Facebook part of the uh, RetroPie Makers group on Facebook. Uh, I'm on the forums also. Hit me up. I, I love this stuff. I really enjoy making it. Yeah, if you have questions, comments, please, please put them down there. I will do my best to answer every one of them. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, I have, I've answered quite a few over there. Try to help some people out. So if there's anything you want to see in a future video, let me know. I'll, I'll try to do it. Thanks again, guys, for watching. Have a good one.